Good morning, and thanks for coming. Excellent. Great. Good morning again. At Uber, there's a lot of math and technology behind the simplicity of the app. Data and tech are cool, but we're also fundamentally reshaping how we move people and products, as well as helping cities great. One of our core cultural values at Uber is about making magic for the people that we serve. That's where it all began. In Paris, when our CEO Travis and his co-founder couldn't get a taxi and thought there should be something better, an app that summons a ride to you at the touch of a button in minutes. And it, as Uber has grown, this idea of what is magical has grown too, and the bar has been raised. Uber now means much more than just a ride at the tap of a button. It means ice cream or gorgeous puppies that need a home. And for dog lovers like, you, like me, I absolutely love this photo. Um, or a ride with a world famous DJ, or even the opportunity to easily donate your leftover clothes to Goodwill. It means being able to open your app and order a fresh cooked meal from a renowned restaurant to your door within minutes via Uber Eats now. And in cities around the world, we brought everything on demand from McDonald's breakfast sandwiches to live musical experiences to even hurricane preparedness kits. But when we really drill down into the question, what makes Uber work? What makes it magic? We came up with a surprising answer, the idea of bits and atoms. And you're going to love this video. For Uber, the bit represents our technology. It's complex, precise, and advanced. But when it's expressed, it is effortless and refined. And if you think the bit is a big deal, consider the atom. Born 13.8 billion years ago, the atom is responsible for everything, from the BLT, to moms everywhere, to New York City. And for us, the atom signifies our rapidly improving cities, the goods we move from place to place, and most importantly, the people we serve. Until a few short years ago, atoms and bits existed in entirely different worlds. But then, something happened. At Uber, we asked, what if we brought these two worlds together? What would that look like? It looks like this. We are able to create safe, low-cost transportation options like Uber Pool and Uber X. We are able to create efficient and more reliable ways of getting people the things they need. We are able to deliver fresh cooked meals from the most popular, iconic restaurants within minutes. And someday, safe, efficient movement of people and things at a giant scale. Most of us don't think about bits or atoms much, if ever. We think about how to get from here to there, the people in our lives, the millions of tiny dramas that play out across the world each day, the human stuff. Uber ultimately succeeds because we think about the human stuff first. But the way we do it, that's our secret. We leave no bit or atom unturned to create industries that serve people and not the other way around. Even though I recently joined Uber, I love watching that video. Um, Uber exists in the space between the digital infrastructure that underlies radical innovation and the physical, tangible atoms, the people that we serve, the millions of riders and drivers who make a choice every day to share a car with others. So how do we create this Uber experience? There are four principles that help us explain the way we think about it, and we live these every single day. We celebrate our cities in a big way. We span 400 cities in over 70 countries around the world. 
And we're not just technology, but technology that moves cities and people and products. Even our recent redesign was developed to celebrate and reflect the cities in which we operate, from the logo type to the coloring that we use. We believe that it should be easy to get a ride no matter what time it is, no matter what part of town you want to go to. And we put that technology in people's hands. Feedback. It's really in our DNA, and there are some things that we've learned along the way. Technology improves almost everything when it comes to safety and transportation by creating accountability and transparency where there was none, before, during, and after every single ride. With things like GPS tracking, the ability to share your ETA and route in real time with your family and friends, with just a couple of taps, and a strong feedback loop. And every Uber ride is rated, so we have a constant feedback mechanism, which means we're getting feedback from millions of trips around the world every single day. And not everyone knows this, but the rating is two-way. Riders rate the drivers, drivers rate, rate the riders. And you can actually now find your rating in the app. Uber reviews every piece of this feedback. And there's a lot of research behind these rating systems, which are powerful tools, which are essentially posted reputations, and having profile information, such as your driver's name and license plate number. But it just doesn't stop there. Whoops, I apologize. This is not going, sorry about that, folks. The, one more. I think we're having problems with the slides in the back. Sorry. Can you turn to the next one? Great, thank you, sorry. Independent person and having, sorry about that. And as the space between bits and atoms gets smaller, we're also seeing people get closer to technology than ever before. Take, for example, a community that you think would be the last to adopt smartphone technology. Yet, at an ever-popular, ever-growing population of Uber riders and advocates, it's older adults. And if we can go to the video now, please. Thank you. I've always been a very independent person, and having given up my own car, which I have been driving for 60 years, was a huge setback for me. Before I used Uber, I've been all the time calling my grandkids. Now I feel very independent because with the call, I have my service on my door. I've heard my grandchildren talking about her for a long time. And I finally got a smartphone and the first thing I did was find out how to get on Uber. I just felt like I had my wheels back. Yo sí lo, lo uso mucho porque eh, tenemos un grupo eh, de amigas y entonces eh, ahora yo siempre digo que sí, que sí voy, nunca digo que no, porque ya sé que tengo el servicio de Uber. I feel very safe because since the minute that I call, I got the name, the photo, everything of the person that is going to pick me up. Las personas que manejan Uber son muy simpáticas, muy atentos. Se siente uno con mucha confianza. Y por eso digo que me cayó del cielo. I'm always ready when I call Uber because I know it's going to be a short wait. It's much easier than you think. If you're already using a smartphone, it's very easy for you, no matter if you're 60 or 80 or whatever. I went to Washington, I used Uber. I went to Los Angeles, I used Uber. And I go to the grocery, you know, I use it all the time. I think it's just the best thing since popcorn. <laughs> Okay, sorry, let's hope these slides work now. There we go, the pop it. Um, innovation, and it's just not the technology that we have now. We're embarking in new research uh, to figure out how we can use our technology and data to make the Uber experience better for riders and drivers. In almost all the cities in which we operate, Uber's rush hour is not the first thing in the morning or even at the end of the day when people are getting to and from work, but it's late at night when the bars close. 
Our busiest times each week are typically a Friday and Saturday night. And if you were to see a, a trip chart, the trips are like off the chart late um, on those evenings. For those who may have had a bit too much to drink or to help ease tension for the driver, we actually have a Hasbro Bop It experiment going on in North Carolina right now. So when, dri when riders have a little bit too much, they can get distracted with the Bop It and uh, it helps relieve the, uh, the tension with the drivers. And this actually works. <laughs> um, now, we don't think it's going to be a scalable solution. We're not going to put boppets and Ubers around the world, but the concept is something that uh, we're definitely going to work from. And we continue to invest in R&D. Uh, for instance, speeding is responsible for one in three fatalities in the US. And we're doing pilots using GPS and motion detection sensors in a smartphone to detect in real time hard braking and fast accelerating, really moving our technology towards predicting and preventing to improve driving performance to make for a more pleasant ride. And that's the group I'm in at, Dupa, um, at uh, Uber. So let's see, sorry, I keep looking back because I want to make sure these slides are working. So what the future could look like. But we are thinking even bigger when it comes to the vision and how the new relationship between bits and atoms is changing the way we move and live in cities. To talk about the future, we believe you need to talk about the past. So let's go back to the jitney, the Uber before the Uber. Some of you may have heard our founder and CEO, Travis, talk about the jitney. In 1914, it was created or invented by a car salesman named L.P. Draper in Los Angeles. He was driving around town and he saw long lines of people at the trolleys. And he said, well, why don't I just put up a sign on my own car, people can hop on and pay me a jitney, which back then was slang for a nickel. So people started jumping on board, not just in LA, but around the country. And within a year, there were 50,000 rides per day in Seattle, 150,000 in LA, and 45,000 in Kansas. And to give you some perspective, Uber today in Los Angeles is doing 150, 157,000 rides per day, which is 100 years later. So this guy was really moving it. Well, to make a long story short, the existing transportation monopoly 100 years ago, the trolley, got to work putting in regulations that would make it impossible for the jitney to operate. And unfortunately, it soon went uh, out of existence. But the key point is that when you can't own, when you can't share your car, you have to own one. And we all know what a culture of private car ownership looks like. It looks like this, a scene not too far from here in Miami. And in the US, we spend a staggering 7 billion hours a year sitting in traffic. And so up to 30% of our land and space in the US is used simply storing cars that we are only driving 4% of the time. And here in Miami, 90% of commuters drive alone, and it has some of the worst traffic in the nation. And according to recent studies, Miami commuters cumulatively wasted nearly 200 million hours and more than 90 million gallons of gas as a result of congestion. And on average, this delay has cost each commuter about $1,000. So we see another option of the way the world could be, and it starts with Uber Pool. And we've learned that people are willing to share rides. With Uberpool, you share a ride, you split the cost with another person who just happens to be requesting a ride along your same route. And Pool makes a lot of sense. It's more efficient and it's affordable for everyone. It means drivers can stay on trips for much longer rather than having idle time between picking up passengers, what we call the continuous trip. And the impacts of Uber Pool in the short term that we've offered, it has been tremendous. You can help already start to build the cities of the future when we put the technology again in people's hands. In LA, where we rolled out Pool just eight months ago, we've taken nearly eight million rides, I'm sorry, eight million miles off the roads and close to 1.4 thousand metric tons of CO2 out of the air. We've added 100,000 new people who are now carpooling every single week. And right here in Miami, we've only had pool since November and just recently expanded to cover the whole South Florida region. 
the numbers are also pretty remarkable. Over 800,000 miles have been saved by riders sharing their trip in Miami-Dade. That translates to over 17,000 gallons of fuel saved and over 150 metric tons of CO2 emissions avoided. This is a short little video. I don't know if you folks have seen it on, on YouTube. Um, it's a video shot in Seattle, and it really illustrates how something that used to be very fundamentally private, the act of just driving in your personal car, is being shared using Uberpool and the possibilities that it, that shared experience can provide. So the video, please. today, and I also um, want to extend a huge thank you to all the people I work with at Uber uh, and all the hard work they do every single day. Uh, I wouldn't be up here if it wasn't for them. Um, from the hardworking folks in our operations to our really, really awesome driver partners and riders, it's, thank you again.